Queer and trans people have always existed, and so have their stories. These stories have played a critical role throughout history. They've given us stories of queer love and passion, and they've shown that queer people can persevere through every hardship. I'm Elliot Schrafer, and this is a history of queer literature. The ancient Greeks are known for a lot of things, and they have their fair share of homoerotic tales. One such tale is Sappho 31, a fragment of a poem written sometime between the 5th and 6th centuries BC. The author, Sappho, lived on the Greek isle of Lesbos. Yes, that's where it came from. In the poem, Sappho describes her anguish as she watches the object of her affection, a woman, presumably marrying a man. Like Sappho during her day, authors during the Middle Ages and into the Elizabethan era were no stranger to including storylines and characters that are interpreted as queer and or trans today even if their work doesn't explicitly identify them as such. Once you get to the 1800s, when pressure from the church and government had long since made homosexuality illegal, it was common to discreetly hide queer themes within literature in one way or another. Without adequate shielding, those stories might be censored or not published at all. E.M. Forster, for example, was best known for his work about English classism and colonialism. His first explicitly homoerotic book, Morris, wasn't published until after his death in 1970. Other notable censored authors of the time include the infamous Oscar Wilde, whose initial version of The Picture of Dorian Gray was too scandalous for his editors, and the legendary poet Emily Dickinson, who wrote exhaustive love letters to her sister-in-law, Susan. But Susan's name was omitted by her editors. Prominent LGBTQ authors in the 19th century often employed coded language and metaphors. They would use flowers to describe their love, desires, and passions. Queer communities co-opted the secret floral language to communicate with each other. The slur pansy, in fact, comes from the green carnation, or pansy, that gay men would wear on their lapels. Joseph and His Friend, written by American writer Bayard Taylor in 1870, is widely considered to be the first American gay novel. Even though the two male protagonists in the book don't have a physical relationship, they do develop an intimate, romantic attraction to each other that defies the coded language of other queer texts of the time. By the 1920s, cultural renaissances were popping up around the globe. Many queer authors used this communal momentum to be more forward with their stories. For example, Virginia Woolf's Orlando, a biography, focused on a protagonist who changes gender partway through the book. It has been described as a feminist book, a book about gender, and even as an extended metaphor for the transgender experience. The main character is based on Vita Sackville West, Wolf's real-life lover and fellow poet. Sackville West often spoke about being gender fluid and bisexual, although they didn't have those terms at the time. Around the same time in the States, many famous black authors of the Harlem Renaissance were rumored to be queer. While authors and poets like Langston Hughes and County Cullen were never explicitly out, they did help pave the way for the likes of James Baldwin, Bell Hooks, and Rita Mae Brown. As these stories came further into the light, and once Stonewall burst open the dam for queer rights, these stories began releasing more and more openly and often to notoriety. From fiction, to sociology books, to manifestos, out and proud authors were becoming more mainstream. In 1969, the first queer YA novel, I'll Get There, It Better Be Worth the Trip, by John Donovan was published. In 1974, lesbian author Patricia Nell Warren wrote The Front Runner, a love story between a male athlete and his male coach. It was a New York Times bestseller, making it the first contemporary gay novel to achieve mainstream success. Queer literature continued to become so prominent that in 1989, the Lambda Literary Awards were founded, with categories to celebrate a wide range of literature, featuring numerous gender and sexual identities. And historic strides continue to be made in the world of queer YA. In September of 2020, Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas became the first book by an openly trans author centering on a trans character to hit the bestseller list. According to Bookscan, 5 million LGBTQ plus fiction books were sold in 2021, double the sales of the previous year. YA readers also love LGBTQ plus romance novels, which increased in sales by 740% between 2020 and 2021. Beginning in 2021, they Both Die at the End, a queer YA book by Adam Silvera, spent over a year atop the best-selling YA paperback list. In November 2022, both They Both Die at the End and its prequel The First to Die at the End held the top spots on the hardcover and paperback New York Times lists. And the genre just keeps growing. 
Queer readers who feel isolated, or readers who want to just find someone who looks like them in a book, have a better chance now than ever before to find books that celebrate characters across the LGBTQ spectrum. In an age of ever-increasing book banning and censorship, it's so important to support and read queer stories. Stories that help us forge a brighter, more inclusive future.